On today's episode, we talk a little regress or impress, and then we jump into the mailbag. It's your questions. Mail Make sure bag. you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single show, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore is here. Mike Wright, present, accounted for. I'm Andy Holloway. Happy to have you with us. We've got a good show for you today. It's going to be fun to hang out. We great some, show. Uh, great show. Oh, thank you, Mike. I was worried. That at was first. close. I was like, that was close. Is this just a good show? I thought our goal was to lay down a bunch of mid to good. So that way later. Mm. When we get to like the football season, we're peaking. That's what I'm saying. Are you willing to okay. commit? Are you willing to commit to that? All right, let's take no. it down a notch. No. No. I'm in. I'm in. You're in? Yeah, I'm just He's doing been good. in for a while, if you <laughs> noticed. <laughs> I've been in for about nine years. <laughs> I only do good. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going from great to excellent. So, Oh, you're you, so we're doing great shows, and then you're going to jump it up uh, yes. to excellent, which we, me and Jason, we can't get there. Um, it, it is a bar you cannot clear. Speaking of that, not excellent. I mean, I'm looking at the back wall of our studio today, and what? I'm seeing this. What's not excellent? This happy-go-lucky Justin Jefferson. Oh, <laughs> On the back wall, and I'm just, and then I'm thinking oh, about these rumors of Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta. He's so happy in that picture. Yeah, he looks like he's he's just got his whole future ahead of him. It's, it's okay, man. Russ is out there as a free agent. Yeah, so like yeah. I said, it lo he looks so happy back there, and um, you know, I guess I guess money, money will make him happy, right? Because he's gonna get a bunch of that. Yes, he will. he will get he will get the cash. So yeah, that was you know we'll talk about a number of news items, but that is one that's come out is, you know, whether Kirk Cousins goes back to Minnesota and I started to have a bit of a change of heart there. Oh no. Did the Florio report get you? Uh, it wasn't the Florio report. It was, it was taking a step back and, and recognizing what a 35 year old off of an Achilles Kirk Cousins you know, it's so easy to just like kind of put the default Kirk Cousins forward as as the standard and it's like what if what if like Minnesota would be right not to overpay him like if it sure. if, if he's not himself like it's not like Kirk Cousins has been it's not Mahomes all right sure he's a, I think Kirk Cousins is a very underrated high quality he's top, he's a starting quarterback top 12 actual talent quarterback starter I, I, I would, but you know what I'm saying? I like know I, exactly what you're saying I mean basically you know there were a lot of questions when the Seahawks got rid of Russell Wilson of like, you know, but they yes. they knew they were like, yeah, this is fine. We're not paying. We know what's the right the writing that's on the wall. We're not going to pay that contract. But the difference here is that they knew they they were working with Russ. They saw what Russ was doing. This is totally different. You can't know. Like the last well, we saw, Kirk, he was great, and then he got yes, and then he got injured. Yes, I, I guess I just mean there's a percentage chance that if they brought Kirk Cousins back. We look back in two or three years and say, you know, maybe that wasn't the yeah. – like, now they're having to restart the quarterback position in Minnesota, and, like, Justin Jefferson's career is going to be much longer than Kirk Cousins. And so it was my first time kind of thinking through that and saying, well – Basically thinking as a Viking general manager, you, you yes. opened the window to maybe that actually isn't best for our franchise. Correct. Interesting. Correct. Yeah, and, and, and like, you know, some legends at the wide receiver position, they obviously have gone through multiple quarterbacks. Larry Fitzgerald had his – Day in the Sun, and he had you know, um, you know the heyday with Kirk Kurt Warner, and then seasons we don't speak. And of. then you had like the John Skelton years, but then you got like Kevin Cobb, and then Carson Palmer comes back around, and like I, like, I just wonder in the long view, like Larry Fitzgerald had a three season stretch. Let's see, here, uh, sixteen games, seven hundred and ninety eight yards. <laughs> sixteen games, nine hundred and fifty four. Uh, fourteen games, seven hundred and eighty four. I mean that's in the prime of his career, and then had the Carson Palmer resurgence. Yeah, so so I I don't know how it's going to turn out. We're going to find it, out soon. It's it comes down to 
uh, how how long of a contract does Kirk Cousins want? Uh, to me, if I'm the Vikings manager, I'm willing to take the gamble because I know what my quarterback position looks like and the uh I don't remember the source of the the rumor where it was starting. It might have been me. I could have started <laughs> this rumor that uh the one of their rip cords is trying to trade for Trey Lance. So I mean, that's that's where you are if you don't get Kirk Cousins that's, back. That's true, but then So I'll go uh, I'll give Kirk a two year. That makes sense. But if you flip it the other direction, you look at Atlanta with young Bijan, young Drake London, young Kyle Pitts, um, brand new head coach, and you say you don't want them to end up in the Russell Wilson situation where they're the Denver, right? They pick up a Kirk Cousins it's, who's it's not a hundred percent healthy. Oh so, yeah, yeah so, sure. So give them a year to be a hundred percent, you know, or or whatever. Maybe this year's not. Then he's thirty six. Atlanta I mean, it should be fine, but it, it just kind of. You'd if have you to have to over- reset again in three years in Atlanta when you've got the number eight pick and you could take JJ McCarthy potentially, yeah, sure. Then, then do you? You know, Denver wishes they would have drafted a quarterback. I mean, I just saw because Russell Wilson's going to be gone, and it's Jarrett Stidham, right? Yep. And so Jarrett Stidham is the guy until he's not the guy in Denver, and I, I, they they would have been better off finding a way to start Jarrett Stidham two years ago in Denver. That was that's the truth. Uh, yeah, with, with the knowledge that we have right, right. now. Yeah. So it, it's a tough game. I mean, obviously, you don't win without a quarterback. Um, but whether Atlanta's got that money they want to send out for Cousins, they believe in the rehab, guess we'll find out very, very soon. But um, before we get into things, got a quick question uh, special for you guys today. Reminder, the Ultimate Draft Kit, you can pre-order it now at ultimatedraftkit.com. If you get the UDK Plus, you get instant access to the Dynasty Pass, Mm -hmm. which includes now premium articles this entire offseason, big-time articles, right? Meaty. Yeah, they are are meaty. They are substantive, if that is even a word. That's 100% a word. Fantastic. You even pronounced it right. Uh, And it's it's currently receiving the the post-combine update. So... Some of the rookie rankings are being adjusted. Some of the startup rankings are being adjusted. New mock draft. New a uh, new mm-hmm. mock draft just hit there as well. So it's always always improving. So and you- and Kyle's. Uh, so in my top ten things to remember, I was highlighting some thresholds for yards per route run and talk about wide receivers. And you know it's in the context of the podcast. So I have you know a couple minutes for my monologue. And there is a beast of an article right now written by. The Kyle Borgogan talking about those the the wide receivers and really fleshing it out. I believe it clocked in as a twenty seven minute read. Possible. So I did it. Yeah, every I word put, I put in the work. All right. Yeah. Too it, long it, didn't read. It was it was it's pretty long. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good information. <laughs> Jason's is that like, on Audible yet? Or uh, <laughs> Jason's like, whoa, is that? Hold on, is that two sentences? Too uh, long. Um. It's a good article. It talks all about uh, some things we we hinted at on the show about uh, young first and second year wide receivers, targets per route run data, and what has proven itself true in the majority of cases over a long period of time. So you can make great decisions regarding your dynasty wide receivers. And and I'm still I'm sitting here and I'm going, Mike, you're you're now 41 years young, and you haven't tried substantive on for size <laughs> since, until now. So congrats on that new vocabulary. Well, it's like draft when, pick. I, when I'm speaking, it, sometimes, you know, you say words cause in your head you go, that makes sense. And then you find out it wasn't a word. Oh, so this was the opposite. I was, yeah, well, I was throwing it out and it, we landed safely. I wanted to thank the foot clan for all the support over on, uh, the podcast platforms. Every time you review the show over there, um, you help us out a lot. It's just a quick and easy way to, you know, help us with the algorithms and building the show. I mean, the, the foot clan is responsible for everything that we've been able to build, uh, your listenership, your support. And so when you, uh, do those little things that make a big difference on the platforms, we really appreciate it. We do read those reviews. They come through to our Slack channel and, um, we see them. So thank you, uh, Apple podcasts, Spotify, or if you subscribe over on YouTube. So here's our quick question for the day. That don't impress me much. 
<laughs> okay. All right, we're doing a regressor impress. <laughs> that, Boom, that, my mind is blown right now. That video graphic is regressed. What's going on with the hat on my head? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look you look like you were at a Florida retirement home. Um, it looked like he like my head would have to be another five inches tall. For he that has hat. he has gotten taller though. I mean, it, it's happening, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> what I'm laughing at is the fact that this entire day, Al Borland has been singing, "You don't impress uh, me much," and I I thought this was from nowhere. And he's getting it in Papa Josh's head, who's mad at him. And uh, no, it was from from the quick question, apparently. But Jason. Yes. Regress or impress Dak Prescott? Does he have a top five finish in store for 2024? I If I've got to pick between regress or impress, I have to pick regress. Um, you know, the we've seen him have monster seasons before. Back in 2019, he was the quarterback, too. Um, you know, he, he can he can put it together. Uh, this last season, Mike had the great call of like the second half sleeper looked to be Dak Prescott. Part of that was because of the specific schedule that they were going to hit tough run defenses, really easy pass defenses. And it all came together. I think Dak is fantastic. I think he's talented. Uh, you know, his, his touchdown, uh, percentage wasn't outlandish. It was like 6.1. Uh, looking back, it's like the last couple of years, 5.8, 6.2. He's, he's right around there. So I, I don't think is, you know, is absolutely, you know, a crazy outlier. He'll never be anywhere near as good as he was in 2023 again. But he's he's almost certain to regress because he was so hot and so fire the the end of that season. It just doesn't make sense to 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 keep that kind of a pace when you don't have the same schedule that lines up. So, if I've got to pick between regress or impress, I I think Dak regresses. It it was the quarterback one in that stretch, and it was from week six on. So it was a it was a long run. Uh, when you look back historically, 2019, he averaged more points per game than he did this last year. That was that number two finish you alluded to. He finished at number six back in his rookie season at almost 18 points per game. How many quarterbacks did we have? I mean, Joe Burrow was knocked out of contention, right? Mm -hmm. Justin Herbert was knocked out of contention. Mm -hmm. Um, Am I forgetting some other ones? Mahomes obviously was he was, it was a down year, eight, very down very year. down year for Mahomes. That's that's what makes it more difficult for me. Do I think that he could average twenty fantasy points a game next year? I do. Kyler was gone for half. Kyler the year. was gone. I, it's just whether that ends up being top five. That's a tough line, which is why this is a good question. And I, the house would be on the the not being able to impress. But I'm going to go with impress. I think he sneaks in. Okay. I think he ends up quarterback four or five next year. Bring him back the same recipe for success. One of the best wide receivers in the game, and currently no solutions at running back. I think it's all on his shoulders. He's gonna he's gonna re redo the contract, and the numbers are gonna be insane. And I think Dak's gonna come back and sneak inside the top he, five. He, he absolutely could be. We could go through the exercise of seeing. Oh, what other real quarterbacks? Yeah, you know you're gonna have Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts above him, mm -hmm. right? So, do you think he does better than Mahomes this next year? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll still say no. I'll say no. Lamar Jackson. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll go yeah. Of groaning. If, if you're I'll a, go, yeah, if you're yeah there, then I, I think I think impress is that right. going to work? Because then you're talking about Burrow, Herbert, um, Kyler, maybe Anthony okay. Richardson, okay. and he's in that tier. Agreed. All right, Mike. What, where I, are you? Regress or impress? I, I will take the field. Uh, even though I think he could cert certainly do it. He had a lot of things working for him, uh, especially you know, like Tony Pollard's inefficiency at the goal line. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the, the what they do at the running back position. But I, we don't have the, the, the linear schedule, but we do know who the opponents will be. And so I can just – I mean, of course, his division, you know, so the Giants, the Manders, and the Eagles will play them twice. But then we got the Saints – the Bucks and the Lions, uh, and these are home games. The Ravens. Okay, those are those are pretty good so the far. The Ravens, the Bengals, the Texans. Those are not as good. Let's see, and then on the road we have the 49ers, the Falcons, the Panthers, the Steelers, and the Browns. I it feels middle of the road. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so you went with the field. Um, Top five I, is just that's a that's a lot. I get it. I get it. Uh, Follow-up question. Will he be drafted as a top five 
fantasy quarterback. No. I don't think so. I, I think that there will be people that are hot and bothered for certain names like Anthony Richardson, like C.J. Stroud. Stroud. If Justin Fields landed in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, he would people be, he be, would be in that. That, that conversation. And so he, he will – he could end up being a value um, in consecutive seasons. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Michael Pittman, we, we talked about it on the last show, but it's official now, the franchise tag for Michael Pittman. They have yet to reach an extension agreement, but he is going to be a Colt. Dalton Schultz. We got one right so yeah, far. Yeah, we did. All right. We all said Bat he'd go back to the Texans, and they and he did. Three. I almost said batting a hundred. That's that's my baseball. Oh, really? A hundred? Yeah. yeah, you don't want that. No, you want to be batting a thousand. Normally for free agent <laughs> predictions, batting a hundred is about how it goes. Right. Um, three year, thirty six million dollar extension. He was actually the tight end three during a seven week stretch in the middle of the season. He's a very good player. He's a very uh, quarterback friendly tight mm -hmm. end for CJ Stroud and they had a ton of money so this is just it made a ton of sense I'm happy for him yeah, because he, I felt like this, himself. this last year I feel like he was really shunned in the free agent market there were other tight ends not as good as him that were getting money and then he couldn't find anything so he he bets on himself does a one-year deal and came through good for you Dalton the doctor got paid I wonder if you know this news yet Jason because it just broke but Zach Ertz a one-year <laughs> deal with the Washington Commanders. All of us <laughs> Dynasty Zach Ertz owners rejoice. We did it. They dumped Logan Thomas to go get Zach Ertz. It makes so much sense. Because of Cliff? Because of Cliff. Cliff Kingsbury peppered Zach Ertz with targets in Arizona. Um, Ertz is still, I hate to I hate to break it to you, he's still very capable. He's certainly as capable, if not more, than Logan Thomas, who had relevance in Washington but he, he he was prior to the really bad knee injury he had. I mean, it's kind of like what you were talking about with Kirk Cousins. Maybe he doesn't come back as well, strong he, off we, the Well, he already came back. I mean, the, the, yeah, the teams evaluated him, and he signed with the Lions. He just didn't get to play with them. Uh, at least in that regard, we have a lot more time. But, yards, yeah, I mean, he's not going to be meaningful. Let's just tell the truth. Yeah. Yards after catch. It's not going to matter. An average. Yards after catch per game over under two yards. Oh, under. Okay. After? after? Yeah. I don't under. care if he runs with it. I want him to catch it, Dennis Pitta style. Just catch it in the <laughs> bread basket and go down. And he can do that. He, he, had, he was very, very good at doing that. He had two games over 50 yards last year in it, set through seven weeks. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I can it's say. Irrelevant. How'd Hollywood do? Uh, How'd Michael Wilson do? Yeah, not good. Yeah, I mean, Arizona was a bit of a mess. I mean, the year before in his 10-game stretch. Tell that to James Conner. He was still at 80 catches. But, yeah, um, he's he's not going to be good. I don't know why I'm talking about him. I defend stupid players. <laughs> uh, Ian Rappaport talking about the fact the Broncos yeah. have uh, not just informed Russell Wilson of his release, but they're allowing him to pursue his next contract ahead of time. A little, uh, little bonus time for oh, Russell boy. to go talk. Broncos at, country. We rode. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Now, which now uh, now contractually speaking, do it. The yeah, what, yeah we gotta we gotta get this in for Russ. Oh, unlimited yeah. diarrhea, <laughs> unlimited. Thank you. Yeah, so much. Uh, maximum quantity of contract diarrhea that you could possibly. So the have Denver made. Broncos owe Russell Wilson thirty nine million dollars. Now. That contract will be offset with by whatever he has offered. Yeah, like a veteran but, minimum. But, so that will be a very fun game to play of how much do these teams want the Denver Broncos to eat it? Mm -hmm. Where and and Russ included in that of like I'm just going to take yeah the veteran minimum. I'm going to sit over here and I'm going to collect thirty plus million dollars from from the Denver Broncos, but it's it's a pretty crappy thing to do to a team. Yeah, That's what not going to happen. What, but Zero what, percent chance. But what if he did it with the Raiders, who are, I believe, the second highest odds right now of getting Russ in division? I mean, like, I would, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, the game's been shipped. Sign a veteran minimum. How do you, if you're make in, Denver divi pay if you're all in division, contract. how do you not do it? That's brutal. The year so, one. So wait, it's an, so he gets the same amount of money no matter what. Correct. 
So he could Okay, I take back my zero percent chance. You can say year one, you make five million dollars. I don't know Isn't what the, it weird I don't know what the to be in the is. locker room and not making that money from that team. Isn't that a weird thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, he's a weird guy. It's perfect for us. In division starts to be because that's a that's a competitive advantage. It a major you, one. If you if you're gonna collect forty million dollars no matter what, and it can come from the pocket of your opponent or your team's pocket, why wouldn't you? So, yeah, I mean the 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 new Broncos owners can they can laugh at this money, so it, it probably won't be an actual competitive advantage because it doesn't change the, the cap numbers the same, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, but let's move on to uh, more significant <laughs> sad news. The Seahawks Aww. have released Will Disley. We still love you, Will. Big Montana voted the greatest nickname of all time by the Foot Clan. That was number one? It was number one because of this song. The song it certainly helped. Right off into one, the sunset. One last clap for Big Montana. Look at that Deucer's Alley going. <laughs> We're all climbing. All right. We miss you, buddy. Yeah. You'll find a new home, and we'll we'll hit that button again. Big Montana. Seahawks saved $7 million against the cap for that's that a, move. That's a good, good amount. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, CJ Uzama, goodbye. Uh, the Jets have released him. He never made a mark there at all. Okay, conk, and, conk. Yeah, he's gone. So, yeah, conk, conk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Conk, conk. If you believe conk, in Aaron Rodgers. Tyler Conklin seems to be the only Titan tight end uh, around currently. <laughs> you call him a Titan? A Titan <laughs> the end. end. All right, quick break, and we'll be back with some more um, spectacular footballers. All right, we're back, and we're going to jump into – the mailbag, answer your questions, get you ready for uh, whatever you've got going on. The free agency period, quickly approaching, dynasty trades, uh, NFL draft, whatever you've got for us, we're going to answer them right now. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. Cha. 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 We've got. A lot of questions. No voicemails today. If you have a question, though, you can visit the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button, or you can dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Instagram question from bblakely123. How does Puka rank among the 2024 rookie-wide receivers? Jason is nodding. <laughs> It's such a good question. If, if, if so, you you just throw Puka in with the class, so Harrison and Neighbors and Adunze and and you know mm -hmm. Puka. So where does he rank? Where would you take him? I believe I would, and I've I've wrestled with this one because to me it's it's Puka is definitely above Neighbors and the rest. Um, like, for you, for for me, yes, for for in in my opinion, Puka has done it. He's shown it. I mean, he literally had the best rookie wide receiver season of all time. You can't ask for literally anything more than that. And so, you know, you're you're if you're taking a prospect, you're saying, well, I, I hope he's good, but no, 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 I hope he's great. The only way it's better because it's not even an age thing. It's not like, well, you get one more year. It's like Puka's a young guy. I think he's 22 right now. So. I definitely have him above everyone, but I wonder with Marvin Harrison. I, I, I look and I go, you know, he's more prototypical. He's going to have that draft capital. Uh, you know, Matthew Stafford won't be around forever, and so I go back and forth there. But so you think about putting Puka ahead of Harrison? I think I do put Puka ahead of okay. Harrison, but I think about putting Harrison ahead of Puka. I have Puka three. I would take Harrison, and I would take Neighbors over Puka Nakua. Wow. Oh, and, three just in the rookie wide receivers. I, I, at first, I thought you were saying you got him as your third wide receiver overall, which I wouldn't blame you. No, I was answering the question. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Um, <laughs> I would put him three. Uh, you know, Puka had yes, the best rookie season ever. It is not a some sort of infinite upwards line for players based on their rookie season. I think Neighbors in any other draft in the last ten years would be the number one pick at wide receiver, a top five pick. If Harrison wasn't in it, uh, maybe not the chase here. Chase might have been ahead of him. 
but Harrison is uh, more prototypical. I like his long-term outlook season to season to be a dominator. So I'd put Puka three. I look at Puka a little bit more through the, the lens of uh, maybe what Anquan Bolden did. Anquan Bolden, one of his best seasons ever was his rookie season. He was a tried and true, great fantasy, uh, good output wide receiver for 15 years. It's a great comp. But I, I look at Puka more through that lens where I think there will be some ups and downs. It will come with quarterback change. Um, I still think he's um, amazing. I mean, I, I could be completely wrong in that, but I, I would put him three. The hardest part is just with with both Marv and neighbors. This is all speculation. This is all projection. So it it is is the best rookie season of all time. I like I I get that maybe somehow one of those two guys ends up being a better player than Puka, but I think I would. Oh, yeah, I think I would put Puka ahead but now I'm trying to think if I actually had the 101 in a in this year's rookie draft would I just straight up trade it for right, Puka exactly and I would, I would not do it that. might be a it might be a boat let me let me so, change your perspective let me, okay, let me give you a different, right. let me see if I can if I can talk you into it okay? okay he had the best rookie season ever yep he finishes a wide receiver four he, he had 105 catches for 1486 yards and six touchdowns okay okay and so that was the best rookie season we've ever seen in terms of uh, of those yardage, numbers, yeah. those yardage, the, the yardage. Um, but 105, 1486, and 6, like, that's that's a good season. That's, like, a really good season. Wide receiver 4. Um, but that's not necessarily, like, we've seen, like, Jefferson on a, on a completely annual basis, Chase on a, I guarantee you if you look at Chase's numbers over time, probably over the next five years versus Pukas, you're probably going to see higher touchdown totals, Similar yardage numbers, if not better. Um, Jefferson is probably going to be what sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred yards for the next ten years. So that's how I'm looking at it through the lens of like, do I have a chance at getting? Like, I think Harrison could be Jefferson, but I guess so. My, you trade my, Puka for my, Jefferson, right? My or yes, yes, for sure, because we've seen it. We know what Justin Jefferson is on the NFL field. It's not projection. Well, I mean, the we field is the, the fields are the same. They use grass and the same yard markers. We've seen them on the uh, NFL field I mean, with different the hash markings. Marks. Are, the markings are different. In I remember this conversation about Jamar Chase, and that's why he went in the seventh round. Uh, you, Sometimes the, you just call a spade a spade. You know what's coming. Well, sure, but the alternate arguments are there too. When when Corey Davis was the fourth pick in the NFL draft and was this outlandish superstar yes, that yes, everybody loves, you just don't know. And and today, if push comes to shove, today the hardest part is there is still a chance that the Patriots take Marvin Harrison. And so it's like, okay, even if he's a better prospect. Well, now he's got no quarterback, and now he's you know maybe maybe he'll get one in a couple of years from now, and you know so how many years do I have? And it's all for all of that is like let's say that Marvin Harrison hits, which I think he will hit, and that's why it's so tough. And let's say he hits to the degree of Justin Jefferson. He is Justin Jefferson. You're trading an extra three hundred yards and you know three or four touchdowns for the for the chance. You know, it's it's not a hundred percent guaranteed. Well, yeah, but neither is Puka's rookie season to repeat. Sure, that, that's not guaranteed either. I, it's not guaranteed, but I think it's a much higher hit rate. The, the 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 we've seen it. You know, in all the analytical studies, the the best predictor of future success is past success in the NFL. And just a reminder, Jefferson was ADP wise, like the wide receiver three or wide receiver four in his own in our in dynasty drafts. That was Jerry Judy. And C.D. Lamb above Jefferson. What's your point? My point being, like that year, it wasn't. You would have been like, you wouldn't have been looking at Justin Jefferson as this, the like the number one overall dynasty wide receiver. Like neighbors could do what Jerry Judy did. Yeah, we, we just don't know. It's tough. Yeah, it's a great question. It's a great no. Question. It, it, Puka, I knew it would be. I knew it would be a competitive one. When when I was making my startup rankings for the the UDK Plus. Puka was the most interesting name out there. I was like, man, what do you believe about him? Because he's – is he great or did he have a great season? Yep. Well, and, and, yeah, that's why I brought up the Bolden comp because that was his uh, – I don't know fantasy-wise if it was his best year, but it was close. It was 100 catches. I think he had another year of 100 catches, but that was like year three, and then the rest of his career he dominated, but it was 
much lower numbers. I mean, is Jamar Jamar Chase's rookie season was his best, right? Like Jamar Chase's last two seasons don't come close to comparing to his rookie season. Sure. So it is a great debate. There aren't there isn't an answer right now. There's just opinion and um and you've got them. I think Marvin Harrison, if you're just talking talent, is the is more talented than Puka. All right. Um why don't you grab another question, Mike? Do you have the doc right. up? Yeah, I've got it up here. Uh, <laughs> this is a good one uh, for two people <laughs> on this panel from uh, off of IG from Corbin Clark. What's the cutoff for celebrating a championship? Draft day when a new champ is crowned or death? Well, I, do, What does he mean? Uh, well, I like, can answer the question because I was last year's champ and I know exactly when the cutoff is. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's when you're out. <laughs> so when the when the new champ is crowned. No, 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 no. No, it's when you're out. So oh, if oh, you are the contention? current champ, yeah. Oh, once the reign is ended, that's yeah, what you're saying. As soon, it wasn't when I won a title. It was when it was you were eliminated. You, it, exactly right. When I was eliminated, that's when I can't celebrate anymore. Because I know I'm not the I'm not gonna be the champ anymore. You're not gonna be, but you still are. I get it. I'm and going, I, I'm going I mean, when you're greeted by by our uh by your co manager, you guys every day for the whole year. Hey champ, hey yeah, champ. Yeah. When I, that changed to X champ, did that change when you were eliminated? No. Or when I won. No, no it that did, did that did change. Okay, so I guess I guess Mike is correct here because I was still greeting him as champ and he he was greeting myself as champ every day until you Death Death is a part of the answer though. Yes. Um because you're still you still have a championship. Right. Which there, you remind us of. Yeah, it's just... Uh, I barely remember it, but you remind me. I remember it so clearly. Yeah. Well, but it was so long ago. <laughs> yes, it was <laughs> It was back when uh, back when Andy was not in his 40s. The best part... I'm still not in my 40s. <laughs> yeah. um, the best part of it is that I am trying to shorten your reign simultaneous to I will want to extend my own. So, like, sure. at the end of this, I'll be like, I'll be you. Yeah. Unless I, I so. Unless I win another one. Um, all right, YouTube question from Caleb Travis, 1418. Uh, who do you like more for a bounce-back year with potentially lower average draft position after last year's disappointment? T. Higgins or Jalen Waddell? Uh, both were certainly disappointments relative to draft position. I think just to – I mean, just, just all the vibes in general with those two guys were so positive going into the year mm -hmm. and feel so negative right now. I still been reading about T Higgins trade rumors. Um, even though they franchised him, I've still been reading about that team considering a trade or what, you know, people speculating, not, not directly from Cincinnati, but either way, Waddle Higgins, who's more likely to have the bounce back. I think they'll both bounce back back over where their current uh ADPs are. Right now Jalen Waddle on best ball is wide receiver twenty two and T. Higgins is the wide receiver twenty eight. I I would put a dollar on both of them beating those spots, but I think the better value is T. Higgins. Uh T. Higgins was really, really bad. I mean it, obviously it's seen by his ADP being even lower than Jalen Waddles. And he hurt fantasy managers because he was hurt in a couple of games where he basically went out there, played a snap or two, you know, that counts as a game. So you look at a bunch of the metrics if you're like, oh, his per game stats. Well, the, the snap or two is not, it wasn't as bad this year, but you have, uh, let's see, the injury game in week four, about half the snaps. He comes back the next week, he plays about half. Uh, the final week of the of his season, week seventeen, he played forty percent. Yeah, so three games where he basically did not play half the game. Yeah. I but when you said you think he's the better value, you mean that he's going to be drafted lower? I definitely think Waddle? T. Higgins will be drafted lower than Jalen Waddle. It's that's interesting because I I'd be more concerned about Waddle than Higgins in the sense that Waddle's season, like he failed with the prescription, like with the recipe that they had. Mm -hmm. The quarterback was there, whereas, like, I can easily make the case that, like, you know, Burrow's healthy and Higgins is great. I mean, Tyler Boyd's gone. So I, I guess I was really curious where you thought they'd be drafted. Do we have the current um, yeah, I, I said best that, that, ball ADP? Did you say that? Yeah, oh, so sorry. Jalen Waddle's going six spots, six wide receiver spots oh, okay. ahead of Higgins okay. right now, and I, I think that's I think that sticks. Yeah. So, I, he's, so a, that he's, a better I, he's a better best ball player. Sure, Waddle so, is, yeah. So they may be back-to-back -back in redraft. 
I will be surprised if Higgins goes ahead, uh, assuming he is a Bengal. Mike, where the, were they last year in terms of redraft? Like draft? Who, where the, were they drafted? I think they were. They both, were like wide receiver. It was. It was like wide 15. receiver 12, 13, 14 between. I don't remember the order, but it was 12, 13, 14 with Waddle, Higgins, and Devonta Smith. Like the the three. So that would be. Is that three disappointments? Yeah, I think so. I don't so. think Devontae oh, Smith the, was a – Yeah, the the second round was atrocious this year. Yeah, and that's where Olave but was. and the, the As the resident uh, burn victim from T. Higgins. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's it, – last year is – you can explain it away. And sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes you need to – what is the story of what happened where with, with Waddle, I don't think it's as easy – to explain the the ups and the downs where like last year to start the year you we all kind of forget Joe Burrow had the calf injury the first four games for Joe Burrow he scored 3.2 fantasy points week two against Baltimore 15.4 has a good game T Higgins had a great game then the next two weeks for T Higgins are terrible also Joe Burrow in that in those two games 8.2 points 4.7 it took an entire month before Joe Burrow was finally recovered from the calf injury, and then T. Higgins got hurt, and then Joe Burrow went out for the season. And I had – because I I had totally wiped from my memory. You guys remember week 15 and 16, T. Higgins was a top 10 fantasy wide receiver those weeks? Chase – Because uh, I didn't remember Chase those. Chase gone those weeks? I, me, I believe he was gone. Let me double-check that. Maybe not. Um, Right now – He was gone for – one of them. Okay. Right now, you have to choose between T. Higgins and Drake London. Who do you choose? Higgins. If it's right now, I don't. I don't know who the. I, as of right now, I assume rookie quarterback. Okay. So at, with a rookie quarterback, I would go Waddle with, or Drake London. Waddle. Okay. I wanted to do a little Drake London temperature taking. Yeah, Drake London's. I am. Uh, he's. I'm, I might be really in. Dude, on Drake I London. love it. I love I it. I might be real we, in. The world needs Drake London <laughs> to and be good. I think right now when you draft a player like Drake London, you are you are taking what one of Mike's things to remember. When the ADP is already baked in, uh, the fear or the problems or the downside, which I, I don't know what his is off the top of my head. Pull but, that up, Kyle. For who? Uh, for, for Drake, Drake London. But right now it's like the fear is baked in that he's going to have a bad quarterback. 26. 26. Yeah, exactly. He's such a perfect target. He is. We a, can't talk about him. He's a great target right now. have to use a right code now. name. Because wide receiver twenty six seems like uh, whereabouts. What's something about? that comes from London that so many people won't know? Uh, the, the Queen. The, the oh wait, the, uh, don't talk about the Queen, yeah. man. Come on, you already the did it once. Yeah. Man. The Queen isn't here. Uh, we, we could talk uh, about Big Ben, and people think we're talking about Ben oh. Roethlisberger. You know? No, that's uh, too confusing. I'll get confused. Okay. I'll think you're talking about Big Ben Roethlisberger. All right, okay. meat pie, bangers and mash. No, what's everything? What's, what, Fish what's chips. every generic thing we know about that country? What if we just change his name to like? To like uh, how about the West, Drake France, how about the West End, <laughs> Drac Paris, the West End, the West nice. End. Yeah, that's the that's the Broadway of England. Is it? Uh, see, of course you know that. Of course you know that. Yeah, Have well, you been to the West End? I haven't done a Europe trip. I haven't really been to Europe. I don't need to get over there. Mm. Live show. Usually, if you haven't done a Europe trip, you haven't done a Europe trip. Sorry, you just repeated yourself, and it was very funny to me. Um, I I just think I think Drake London. I think the problem is, is if they do land somebody, anybody has any kind of confidence in, he will be the oh skyrocket. He will be the most obvious breakout candidate possible. But if it is a rookie, that's when you start to get it gets interesting because we we'll have the Stroud with Collins and Tank Dell template from last year. But if it's JJ McCarthy, you're telling me people aren't going to doubt Drake London? They're going to be there's going to be huge doubt. Well, that's what I'm saying. Mike's Mike's tip of saying if if your ADP already has the negative baked in, which I think. I think if J.J. McCarthy is their quarterback, Drake London will go about wide receiver 26. But if they go and sign Kirk Cousins, where's he go, wh wh top? Is he going to be like a – be like Garrett Wilson hype light yeah. from last yeah, year. Exactly. Yeah. Over the last two seasons, London has posted 2.47 yards per route run in three wide receiver sets. And we bring that up because the new OC, Zach Robinson, is coming from the McVay system. So more wide receivers on the field. Uh, and we'll see if Drake Lennon can do it. He just needs the ball thrown near him. That's the big thing. Uh, YouTube question from that guy. Hey, that guy. I know that guy. I'm thinking of making my league's trophy presentation to be like a wedding. I'd like the defending champ to be at the altar with the new champ. 
Rock. The right. last place team then walks the championship ring down the aisle. Okay. With the second to last place team scattering rose petals. Okay. I was How do we how how can the rest of the twelve team league be involved? I will start by saying I was I I, I was, I've never heard this. I'm a little hesitant. I was sold. By the by the end of that paragraph, I am in. This is very funny. I, I love but it. How do we get I mean, I imagine second, third, fourth, and fifth are standing there like yeah, the best men. You need some some groomsmen, and then the rest of them you have to take a side. Like when you sit with the, uh, you right. sit on the groom side mm. or the bride side. Well, one of them's got to be the uh, is the commission the, like the pastor. Yeah, the the, the like. Yeah. The, but like what the if the commission is one of those four? You can't yeah, be, you, you can't you, play both you roles. Still, you yeah. still have to. Then you hire a real pastor. Also, I I do feel like <laughs> that now we're talking. Yeah, this is a sanctioned religious you pay, ceremony. You pay the pastor to do a wedding, the regular rate, and you don't tell him what's going on <laughs> till he gets there. And you just say, "Stand right there. We don't need a rehearsal. Just stand. We just need you." I'm to not stand sure there. I can wed a trophy and a man. <laughs> All right, quick break. You back, will do it, Reverend. Back with another question. <laughs> All right, back into the mailbag. This question comes from Connor over on Instagram. Which player do you think will have a career resurgence in 2024? So uh, that means that they they need one. So I, it'd be easy to look at maybe Pollard. <laughs> uh, and you could look at... The name that comes to mind to me, it does not count because it is not a resurgence. Because he hasn't really There hasn't done been a it. surge. It has but it's Kyle Pitts is he I mean his rookie season. Rookie was really season good. counts enough for yes. that to be okay. a resurgence. It absolutely then, I, does. then I think Kyle Pitts could have a resurgence. How about Stefan Diggs? Man. They they believe it. Uh they do. A Matthew Berry's article yep. uh, from the Combine talking about the team. They just look at him as their one. Yeah. Um I hope I hope so. But I I'm gonna be. I've passed him in every single. So you're out draft. I'm. I'm. I'm out on digs this year. It's crazy because like, Gabe Davis is gone. Stephon Diggs is the one for the one, right? He's the one for the number one quarterback in fantasy. Yeah, he was. that should that should be automatic. It should. Yeah, it really it, should. Have been automatic <laughs> last half of last year. Didn't Amari Cooper have really weird runs? Oh with yeah, Dak. Where he was like magma his hot life. fire. His whole career he would have. Yeah. But then he was real streaky. But then like six games goes by and you're like, I mean, that's probably half of why they got rid of him. And then they're like, whoops. It could be. It could be. Man, a, re a full resurgence. Zach Ertz in Washington, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. Russell Mark Wilson. Andrews is one name that you could bring up because I feel like. Uh, All that takes is health. Just if he plays 16, he's resurgent. That's I mean, saying I mean, something, though, for him. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's like... A hundred percent, but that's the easiest bet to make. He if just you, is so low in our best ball draft. I mean, it shows you that... Oh, he's for not sure. being. It's not being assumed. No, it is not, and I think people are people are very, very worried that they're not going to get 16 games or 17 games from Mark Andrews, and I don't blame them for being worried because you haven't got 17 games from him, but... You don't worry about Isaiah Likely because the second he was back... He was a huge part of the offense. No, I, I don't I don't worry about Isaiah Likely. Uh, I think Likely can survive and do his own thing aside from Andrews. When you're the one in an offense, when you're the number one target in an offense, which I which Mark Andrews has been for his tenure with Lamar Jackson, that's not something where the the backup tight end is gonna steal those looks. I'm gonna throw this next question over. Let Papa Josh ask it. Um, Instagram question there. Do you do you see it, Josh? Yeah. Who has won the most League of Record titles between you three? Mm. Unfortunately. Well, that's a good question that you came up with. Unfortunately, it's now a tie. Woo-wee! It's a tie. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike and I have three. Jason has two. Yep. So we have we got eight. Eight in 16 good. years. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. I also. That is eight in 16 years. That's, that is above average. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Um. Thanks for asking, Josh. Yeah, appreciate nice. that. Uh, if you count Josh, we have nine as a, as a four pack. You know what I mean? I, I would never. Yeah, never. Eight. We have eight. <laughs> I will count Jeremy's if he ever gets one. We have. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> oh man, 
It's when he lowers. So we his, will stay at eight. It's when he lowers his chair a little bit in the, over there. Uh, into the ocean he goes. All right, YouTube question. This is a bunch of uh, Keep Brees Hall questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, Big Ham wants to know you can keep Brees or Bijan. Who who are you keeping? I'm I'm I've said it once. I'll say it again. I'm going to keep Brees. I don't blame you at all. I'm if it is dynasty, I'm on the Bijan side. Redraft, I think I'm on Brees. I, we'll we'll go read. We'll, we'll just do both. Why not? Uh, and I, I think I'm Brees, with Jason. Brees. I think I'm with Jason. That Bijan would be my dino pick, and Brees would be my redraft. And then this YouTube uh, question from Joe says: PPR twelve team keep one, Brees or Gibbs? It Brees. is a full PPR. It's and I'm taking Brees. I'll go Brees. Yep. Instagram question from Maddie: uh, What do you think David Montgomery's role will be this season? Uh, re refer to the 2023 tape. Yeah, or you can refer to the I, 2022 tape, <laughs> where uh, Jamal, Jamal Williams. Williams. Yeah, I mean, I I don't. I think it's going to be a, a a small step down from last year's output. Okay, a little bit. Yeah, I think it's more indicative of the second half of the season when he was, he was almost like a Brian Robinson style steady Eddie, as opposed to a multi touchdown breakout type of player. I don't, I don't know if he's. I mean, he could do it, right? He could make. He could have a huge run and he'll be fine. I still think he's very good. Dude, it's so wild. So after his injury, so we have week ten through eighteen, uh, which is that is nine games played, and he did not score a rushing touchdown in two of them. Yeah, I mean it was, it, but he, yet he, during that stretch, only only one time was he inside the top ten finishes, right? Uh, Twice, yeah. but yes, he. I mean. Depending on what inside the top ten yeah, is is number ten inside the top ten? Yeah, because you're if you did a top ten countdown, you would start. I at 10. need you to teach me how to say it the way I mean it. You, do, you say in the top nine. That's not. I, that doesn't work for me. I, I need a way to say the words top ten, but only mean the top nine. Right, because that uh, I get that it, frames that my argument the, better. Yeah, for sure. Um, but he, but either way, you know what I'm saying. Like he was a, even though he scored like games with a touchdown, 13, 15, Finished at 13th, 15th, 17th, and 21st. That sounds like Brian Robinson to me. Did not finish ahead of the top 10. <laughs> he only finished ahead. Oh, you were searching for it for me. <laughs> of number 10 one time. Not Something inside, like but ahead of. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough. That's really tough. Better than the top 10. It the just feels like lying. It does. You know what I mean? But There's, I'm trying to. I know. We're I'm trying, trying to, to figure lie. out how to lie. Uh, three catches on third down on the whole year. Like Jameer Gibbs is, is definitely the future. He's definitely the explosive game. But if you look at from the bye week on, David Montgomery was still going to put up 230 carries for 1,100 yards, and most importantly, and 10 touchdowns or 13 touchdowns. 13 touchdowns. I mean, the so, touchdowns yeah. are what Jamal Williams did. Jamal mm -hmm. Williams was much less special, but he had so many. touchdowns. Do you think he'll be undervalued? I do. I think David Montgomery so, will absolutely be undervalued. Right now, running back 20 if you're playing best ball, which is right around Ramondre, Nick Chubb, and Tony Pollard. He finished as the running back 13, and he missed three games. Really, four games. Yeah, it's tough, though, when you got a superstar. Oh, I get it. I, I get mean, that's the, That's why the ADP is going to be lower. Yeah. But it's, but it's baked in, right? That's, that's the tip. It's, like, it's baked in, but it's also an unknown. It's just like... David Montgomery's utilization, we don't expect to change, but it could. It could, but if it does change, I think he'll be about the running back 20 where he's being drafted. Gotcha. And yeah, in he, the upside case. Gotcha, that makes sense. He feels like, even, let's say they brought the Gibbs and Monty are healthy all year long yeah, through a miracle. <clears throat> he, Montgomery's going to finish in the top 24, and then if Gibbs misses time, then you get right huge boom opportunity. Nate Kennedy wants to know, do you rename your team each season or choose a timeless name? I have a story for this. Okay. It will answer the question the way we have always answered it, but it will do it with an example. Our answer is we keep a name mm -hmm. because you're building a dynasty, right? You're building a legend. I met somebody this past week at my daughter's softball uh, practice, and uh, it was a gentleman – who plays a lot of fantasy football. This gentleman had CeeDee Lamb and Tyreek Hill as his wide receivers this past season. How do you think he finished? Uh, champion? I think he did pretty well. He was not the champion because 
Somebody in the league's name was CD's nuts. And he felt like he should probably help the dude out and trade him CD Lamb so it matched his team oh, name. Wait, he did the, It was his the, best friend, and his best friend really wanted his the player that his name was and then got CD Lamb from him and then won the championship with CD Lamb over him. There's no best friends in fantasy football. Well, that's yeah, that was one of the 18 things I explained to him. But what did he get back? Not enough. <laughs> well, not clearly, enough. There was, there was no way mid midway through last year you could have received enough for CD Lamb to to have paid off. The, in the point end. the point being, well, I was right before his real run. The point being is that like if you have a team name that's based on a player, sometimes you don't trade that player away. If it's the inverse, apparently you can trade the player away. Look, uh, we we like you know I like the creative nicknames. Yeah, they're but, they're, they're fun if you're in. But a, I like locking it down. If you're in a full redraft, but it, it also is nice like. Not just for your own team. Like, I, I, you know, I love, you know, having the Dead Ringers or having the Ventura Bravehearts as my teams, but I also like knowing everyone else's team and not having to spend the first couple weeks because some leagues it's not like that that I'm in and they, everybody changes. And I'm like, uh, who's, who is this? I like that, this. That being said, I changed my name to McCaffrey's Hill, so please trade me <laughs> those players. I like this from Jason who – has rebranded his team more than anyone else in the league. You can rebrand every, you know. <laughs> That's changing your name. Yeah, I mean, the, the, a franchise in the NFL goes through that. They do it too. They, we haven't had the Washington Commanders very long. I changed. <laughs> Was your previous so, name somewhat questionable? I changed my my co-manager. Yeah, you don't want to take that you, on. No, it was the change of ownership. Yeah, no, oh. yours is. Look, it was a change of ownership you don't have to at the be top. You don't have to be defensive. Um, well, your old name sucked. <laughs> what? No, my old name was great. Oh, wait. Well, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Over 16 years, I've had three names. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, but that's when we hit you with it. In the last eight years, you've had three names. Fair. All right. Uh, but yeah, keep your name. It's it's fun. What? This isn't a real question. Dagger, how is Mike's hair so luscious? He's wearing a hat, guys. It's because sometimes you got to contain it. <laughs> Some Sometimes, look, when you have hair like this oh on boy. a day-to-day -day basis oh and you're walking down the street. It's too much. And cars are crashing. Right. People are falling over. It's it's too much sometimes. How much of it is it you sit much. next to Jason and you feel like. I have absorbed his follicle no. <laughs> nature. No, you didn't absorb his hair. <laughs> it's just that do you feel like. You want, just cause kind of like a disproportionality of I wanna, talent. I want to teach you a Air lesson, talent. Mike. I want to teach okay. you. I want to teach you how stupid you're being. Um, oh, by the okay. hat thing. All right. I want you to Google John Stamos in a hat, and I want you to <laughs> uh, and I want you to see someone that it does not matter. This is a human being that does not John matter. John Stamos. John Stamos. Oh, he in looks a hat. terrible. Who is that? I don't know. I don't care. He looks stupid. Wow, John Stamoson hat looks like a regular, just a, just, just a regular old weirdo. Just a regular old I weirdo. I don't know what you guys are talking about. He still looks great. I mean, just a dude. But you search John Stamos and you go, that's John Stamos. Yeah, but John, me and John Stamos understand the power and the responsibility. Honestly, him in a hat kind of looks like Bob Saget. Yeah, I mean, they, they might as well be twins. Wow. Yeah. yeah Sometimes, take that hat off and shine. Yeah, not today. Well, not today. You've already, <laughs> you've already got a hat on. Just Feels think. like that's a Pixar movie waiting to happen. Somebody with like powerful hair, and then every time they take the hat off, it maybe not. All right. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just going to stop. Final question here. Instagram, Matt wants to know, Dynasty keep trade cut. Gus Edwards, Josh Palmer, Curtis Samuel. Well, come I'm, on. Oh, that's I'm keeping Josh Palmer. Uh, As am I. It, right now – it's really hard to imagine the Chargers cap situation bringing back both wide receivers as is. Now, they might restructure one of Keenan Allen or Mike Williams, but they might just cut Mike Williams. And if they do, Josh Palmer's shown some flashes, been good when one of the other two guys is injured, and so he's the easy keep for me. Good, Good-ish. He's so weird. Josh Palmer is so weird. So is Curtis Samuel. Yeah, weird. So is John Stamos they in a hat. <laughs> <laughs> weird those players only perform when you don't expect them to or when the situation is slightly weirder than you think like palmer had a huge chance remember two years ago and you're like well, uh, what, what's going on but you know i don't know um 
All right. Any other questions for us, Brooks, that we, we have to answer? Anything you've got? No, nah, you got You em. already said Nothing final question. Nothing luscious hair you related. One last question. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Free Agent Frenzy next week. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you check out the Dynasty podcast. If you want more fantasy yeah. footballers every Wednesday, check that out. Until next time, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.